The 3061S is a 60% Bluetooth RGB laser themed keyboard coming from Atco. It comes in at $110 and boasts some nice features for itself. This offers the question of whether this board is right for the price and does it offer a good alternative as a pre-built keyboard. Let's find out. The 3061S comes in with a standard 60% layout, meaning no arrow keys or afro keys. This is a fairly popular layout with a lot of people. However, for me, it's hard to let go of those precious arrow keys. The board features Bluetooth 5.0 with an 1800 milliamp battery and a type C port for connectivity, which I love to see both. The board can be turned on with the switch via the bottom of the case. On the bottom of the case, you'll also notice two fold out legs to increase your typing angle. However, the typing angle on this board is already really good and I don't think the fold-out legs are necessary, otherwise it'll just be too steep. The board features full-on RGB throughout with no software support at the time of making this video. You can find some macros and RGB options through a series of key presses. The RGB LEDs are rather dim and even though they're always a nice addition to add some color to your board, I just don't think the RGBs are necessary for it. We already got a lot of colors going on. You also get quite a bit of goodies that come in the packaging. You get a keycap puller, a purple rubber cable which is nice to see it fit in with the theme and you also get some extra keycaps with a few novelties and an accent color to the rest of the keyboard. I find it interesting they include arrow keys even though the layout doesn't support it. Same thing goes for the F keys which is also interesting but hey they're there I guess. Overall the board comes with a decent amount of features and extras at this price but now let's look into the quality of the board. The board comes in several variants of Gatoron switches to choose from which are yellow, green, orange, white, and pink. I'm rocking the Gatoron pink switch with this one and they're like a silent tactile switch of sorts. They have a stronger tactile bump than a Cherry MX Brown and they remain just as quiet and with a little less scratchiness. I would probably recommend lubing these switches just to smooth them up though. Although these are soldered into place so you'll have to find a method that supports that. The case on this board is entirely plastic which is to be expected at this price point. I'm just happy to see that it fits in with the theme with that dark purple. The keycaps are PBT and double shot which is awesome to see. The space bar has very minimal warping which is surprising. The edges on the keycap are clean and have a decent thickness as well as the stem. The legends also look pretty good too. Of course, there's some discrepancies here and there, but for the most part, at this price point, it's actually pretty solid. Some of the keycaps have gaps in the stem, but this is only for a couple of them, not all of them. For the price point of this keyboard, it's fine, considering the areas of quality we already addressed. And lastly, these are PBT. The colors aren't as vibrant as ABS, but you know, that's the trade-off. The plate is aluminum from what I can tell, which is pretty standard. And the last thing to look at are the stabilizers, which are colored to match the theme, which is a nice touch. Now the stabs come in with some factory lube on the wires, but still have quite a bit of rattle. I'd recommend some sound dampening inside the board like sorbethane to help kill off the hollow sound inside the board. With that being said, let's hear what this sounds like. It sounds pretty decent in its stock form, however, I took the liberty to desolder the entire board, lube every switch, band-aid mod the stabs, and put some sorbethane into the case, and this took way more time than it was supposed to, so let's just hear how that sounds.
now it's starting to sound better. The stab rattle has been reduced a little bit. The switches sound okay. They're still a bit high pitched, but hey, it's pretty decent now. However, in my recommendation, I just recommend putting some sorbethane in the case and adding a bit of lube inside of the stab housings to get the most effective use of your time for modding this board. Anyways, for $110, I think this is a solid board. I wish it was hot swap. I wish it had screw and stabilizer support, and that's really all I could ask for. But at this price point, it's pretty competitive for the keycap quality and the switch options that give you along with some of the extras provided as well. If you want to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.